Okay, I'm going to start my fourth video with the chapter four critical thinking question. Okay, the first question is, suppose that I've been hired by a sleep clinic to formulate a questionnaire for evaluating patient sleep habits, and I formulated 10 questions for my questionnaire. First, are the patient, is the patient on a regular schedule, and does the patient have a relaxing going to bed routine? Uh, this is, these are both important for circadian rhythms and good sleep. Does the patient feel sleepy, irritable during the day? This could be a result of sleep deprivation. Is the patient working during the subjective night when their biological clock is telling them to go to sleep? How many hours of sleep per night is the patient getting? Is the patient experiencing parasomnia, such as night scares, nightmares, or sleep talking? Is the patient experiencing dysomnia, such as narcolepsy, sleep apnea, or insomnia? Does the patient take an excess of nicotine or caffeine throughout the day on a regular basis? Does the patient nap during the day? Does the patient sleep in a comfortable environment? And does the patient eat right, drink right, exercise regularly, and maintain healthy habits? All of these questions revolve around getting a good night's sleep um, and are important in discovering problems that people may be that may be associated with people's sleep habits. Okay, second question. Um, Luann is working full time and she also has a job during the night shift. Based on what I've learned during, about circadian rhythm, what kind of problems might Luann encounter in trying to carry out this plan of balancing both? Well, not even considering the amount of stress that this person probably has uh, from juggling a full time job and schooling, her sleeping patterns may be affecting her health. Uh, deemed the subjective night by the book, um, it's the time that alertness and performance deteriorate uh, during her work schedule, and this is probably happening to her since she is working a night shift. Her biological clock is telling her to sleep, and being at work is disrupting these circadian rhythms, um, and because of that, her reaction time may be slow, diminished productivity, and she might be accident prone. Overall, she's probably getting less sleep than non-night shift workers as well. Um, based on this account, it looks like she's only getting six hours of sleep, which may not be sufficient to perform well in school and work. There are treatments that can help with um, this subject subjective night issue, and hopefully she would seek those out. Okay, last question. Um, I'm giving a presentation to 7th and 8th graders about the dangers of drug. What are the most persuasive general arguments you can give to convince them? And specifically, what are the arguments um, against alcohol, marijuana, cocaine, and ecstasy? Okay, so when giving a presentation to middle-aged kids about the danger of drugs, um, middle school age kids, I would take advantage of how much young people care about appearance um, and their peers. And I would point out the immediate consequences of drug use. For example, that smoking causes bad breath, stained teeth, um, and then you also have to discuss the long-term uh, effects like the risk of lung cancer, liver damage, addiction, even death. Uh, not to mention that many drugs are illicit and that at their age they have their whole future ahead of them, but it could be jeopardized by the use of drugs. Educating students about the different types of drugs out there and the effects on each of them is really important. Firstly, um, alcohol is a depressant, and apart from its uh, decreasing coordination, ability to form new memories, it can also cause stupid decisions. And at their age, drinking can have harmful developmental impacts and can also interfere with sports, social life, and school, uh, as with any drug. Marijuana, according to the text, can be associated with smaller brain volume and growth stints if begun before 17. All of them should be younger than 17. And this is reason enough to stay away from it because the consequences of that can be pretty bad for your uh, learning abilities. Um, cocaine can cause heart attacks and strokes in even young, healthy individuals. And the powerful dependency that can result from crack cocaine uh, it can be detrimental to their health. And lastly, ecstasy, if overdosed, can be fatal, like a lot of these drugs. But uh, overall, the biggest risk I think associated with any of these drugs um, is that their age, they are all illegal, and most drugs always will be. 
being sent to prison can just be can be just as dangerous and debilitating than um, many of the side effects associated with these drugs. Okay, and that concludes my last and final video for this section. Thank you.